<laughs> Welcome back to Inside the Kentucky Derby. And we're back from the holiday break. It's Kevin Kirstein, Darren Rogers here with you. Thought we'd do a, a little show this week just to sort of recap where we were, what happened when we took our little bit of a layoff, and what's to come because the lead up to Kentucky Derby 150 is bigger than ever, Darren, as we are now two more million dollars added to the purse of the Kentucky Derby. Now five million dollars on the line for Kentucky Derby 150. Yeah, happy New Year, KK. Yeah, it, w- what an exciting way to start um, 2024 with the announcement of the Kentucky Derby being raised from three million to five million. But I mean, 38 of the 50 races that'll be run during the spring meet at Churchill Downs uh, receives significant, you know, boosts. So it's not just the Kentucky Derby. It's the overall program Derby week. I mean, every grade one event run during the meet at Churchill is a grade, uh, a grade one, $1 million race minimum. Um, the Oaks was boosted to 1.5 million. It's really exciting times. I mean, look, it, it's a large part of it is due to the legislature, uh, that, you know, work closely with, um, you know, Kentucky horse racing and, and, and breeding industry to deliver and ensure historical horse racing um, helped fuel the purses. And if you look back, the spring of 2018, it was the last meet before Derby City Gaming opened up in September of 18. And the, and, and, and the stake schedule for that spring was 32 races worth $8.8 8 now we have an additional 18, you know, stakes races and, and prize money's grown, you know, by 16.8 million. So uh, 50 races record 25.6 million on tap during the spring. And of course, headlined by that $5 million Kentucky Derby. It, it's pretty amazing, you know, just to see where we've been in just a few short years. And it, it, it affects everyone, right? It affects obviously the people who are competing to win those races. Right. But it also is effective to, you know, the horse players, Absolutely. And the fans, right. We want the best horses on the biggest stage here on the first Saturday in May and the first Friday in May. And adding money to these purses is going to incentivize to have all eyes here on Kentucky and all the best horses show up on one stage here on the first week in May. <laughs> There it is. The cough is back. By the way, <laughs> apologies. There it is. I was trying. We're going to play that sound effect every time I cough. Oh my word! There it is. Um, <laughs> but to echo your point, I mean, if you own a racehorse, or if you train a racehorse, you want to be in Kentucky. I mean, your goal should be to be in Kentucky, and by delivering these record purses, I mean. $57 million will be passed out to horsemen during the entire, what, what do we have? A, a, a 40, uh, 43 day spring meet, uh, that'll run April 27th through June the 30th. Um, you're going to attract the best horses. Uh, you're going to attract full fields and that really benefits the horse player. I mean, people have responded to the racing in Kentucky, uh, warmly, you know, from, from a, from a national trend, um, there were some meets, uh, around the country where betting has been down, um, you know, four to 5% year over year. That is not the case in Kentucky. No. Um, every racetrack is benefiting, uh, fans are responding and, you know, here at Churchill Downs, I mean, it was a, it was a record setting year. So we're, we're really looking forward, uh, to see what 2024 delivers because, uh, the excitement and the momentum building towards Derby 150. What we're 16 weeks away now. Um, it, it, this is going to be good. Now, did we see a Derby winner over the holiday break? That's the the five million dollar question. And I, if you were to ask me that, I, I still want to say no. And it's it's tough at this stage, right? Because I would have hoped, you know, I, I would have saw something that you know, was a glimmer of hope and maybe winning the, um, you know, 
we, we talked about the gun runner before the holiday break. And, uh, you know, prior to the gun runner was the, uh, the springboard mile where out of the conqueror beat Glenn Gary and a great race. Don't think we saw the winner there, but the gun runner, I think was the race that, you know, all our eyes, or at least my eyes were on. Um, and I thought track fan was a very good winner, but I think the most disappointing horse in that race was Nash sure. who could have been, you know, probably the answer to that question. Should he have won that race? So in my mind, did we see the Derby winner? I don't think so. Um, one race does not make a horse. Correct. It, that, it, true. Horses One bad are, performance. Horses are allowed to lose. They are allowed uh, to lose. Yes. But I, I was hoping that would be the race that I could answer your question with the yes. I'll that, put it that way. Ash was no good. I mean, man, it was, uh, that was disappointing. Very disappointing race in the gun runner at fairgrounds, uh, track phantom, uh, you know, we kind of talked about him on the, the last podcast, but you know, track phantoms really coming together. Um, he was, you know, it took him three tries to break his maiden, but, you know, he came out of a couple of strong performances. And, um, you know, he, when he broke his maiden at Churchill Downs, going a mile and 16th on closing day, uh, that was an eye catching performance. And for him to, um, you know, sit close to the pace in, in, in the, the gun runner, you know, they went 23 and 3, 46 and 4, and he just, you know, pounced on next level. And, and drew away for a, a, a length and a quarter victory. Sneed, you know, was nine to one uh, for Brendan Wall, snuck into second. And, um, you know, Nash was just a one paced kind of third, wasn't he? Yeah, he sure was. He just really didn't show much. As a heavy favorite. I, right. He was, you know, one to two, I think, in that race. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I was I was hoping we would see more from him. Um, it, it, but again, to your point, one race doesn't make a horse. Um, we'll have to see, you know, how he will perform next time. I believe he's going to run in the LeCompte next time out. And, uh, you'd think if he has a similar performance in the LeCompte, then they're going to talk different routes for him, uh, obviously, but you know, maybe he'll wake up in that race and, uh, show the Nash that we thought he was, uh, when we saw him prior, you know, speaking of the, the Brad Cox team, uh, catching freedom was in a you know, impressive winner down at Oaklawn in the Smarty Jones for the Cox camp and an all ball family stable. Uh, he was another one. Christian Torres has found himself on multiple live Kentucky Derby road to the Kentucky Derby mounts. And, um, you know, he won by two and a half lengths over just deal for, for the coach, Wayne Lucas. Wayne can still train it. Was he 87, 88 now? Um, so yeah. I, I think between, you know, those two horses, those are the ones to keep an eye on down at that Oakland, you know, road to the Kentucky Derby, where there's lots of money being thrown around with, you know, the Southwest coming up. And then of course, to the rebel and the Arkansas Derby, but in the, in the Smarty Jones, I thought this is definitely a horse that has, um, you know, proven himself worthy, uh, to keep an eye on, on the road to the Derby. Is it, he the Derby winner? Mm. I, I don't know. I think he's going to need to improve off of that race, but it is a good starting point for his three-year-old year. Yeah, well-bred constitution cult uh, out of a pioneer of the Nile mare and was, uh, you know, did what he needed to do. That was an impressive victory. Uh, look, it was a little bit of a closing bias that day at at, at, at uh, Oaklawn Park, uh, which benefited catching freedom. Uh, I thought Just Steele, the runner-up for Wayne Lucas, uh, ran very credibly. Um, this horse has had a lot of dances already. Eighth race, uh, eight races under his belt. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has made close to $300,000. I would fully expect to see just Steele continue on in this series as well. Yeah. You know, he was coming off of, um, you know, this six and a half furlong, uh, Ed Brown stakes here at Churchill. And, um, you know, Wayne was talking about, you know, stretching this horse <laughs> out. Um, sorry. And, uh, and, and, you know, going to this road to the Derby series, uh, off of that sprint performance. So I thought going off of that sprint back to two turns, I thought that was a credible effort. Gettysburg address. I thought also ran well in that race. He finished fourth one to keep an eye on down the road. I hope, uh, Jason Luch, the, uh, son-in-law to Dennis Allball, racing manager for Allball, doesn't knock me too much for saying, I don't know if, uh, catching freedom is the Derby winner. He's an avid listener of inside the Kentucky Derby. So Excellent. I hope, I hope he doesn't knock me too much. Uh, hey, I want to go back to, to, to the springboard mile. Yeah, let's go back there. Auto the conqueror. Look, the race did not come back fast, but I liked what he did to get up in time. Um, I, I want to see more of this, of this horse down the road. I, I still think this horse has a little something, but it wasn't, 
the fastest of times. He did beat, you know, Doug Anderson's Iowa bred Glengarry by three quarters of a length. I don't think that horse wants much more than that. So he probably backs up, but I, I really want to see Otto the conqueror. Um, let's see where he shows up next down at Oakland park, maybe at, 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 at fairgrounds. Cause I, I kind of like this horse a little bit and I, I invested him in, at a big price Yeah, I remember in the future it. wager. I think I have him at 96 to one. I, I mean, you can't take away the heart and guts of a horse, even if they don't run fast. And that was a gutty yeah. performance. I thought overall the races that we saw on this, you know, little holiday layoff that we were on between the springboard and the, um, the, the gun runner, the Jerome, the, um, the low South. Well, yeah, the low South futurity, I, you know, Winstock was the winner there. Yeah. Um, it, you know, Doc Allred owns the horse along with Jack Lebow. That's the owner and general manager of Los Alamitos. They have said they're not going to transfer the horse away from Bob Baffert. So, um, you know, I think this horse got its futurity slash derby while he could. Um, and, you know, Coach Prime was a real disappointment in that race. I mean, much like this, I was disappointed in Nash. I was also disappointed in, in Coach Prime. But you know what? We saw that last year, and, and I'm, I'm trying to recall the Colt, but there was a Baffert horse who didn't show up at Los Sal when he was a big favorite. Maybe that track, the long stretch, it's a little goofy. I don't know. Yeah. But I'm willing to give uh, Coach Prime another look. A stronghold finished second, and he's a, a horse uh, for Phil D'Amato worth watching out in California. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, you know, the, the you know, main point of California of the horses that aren't trained by Bob Baffert. Definitely, um, you know, stronghold is one to keep an eye on out there. Um, where else we got? New York, the Jerome. We had drum roll, pre, drum roll please. Uh, just a field of five up there in the, in the Jerome. I'd like to see him face a little bit more adversity next time out to see if he's, you know, a, a real true, um, you know, Derby contender. He's owned by Al Gold, who earns, uh, who ran Cyberknife in the Kentucky Derby. Had the great story behind Cyberknife. This is a horse who I think uh, just I need to see a little bit more of to think of him as a true contender. Yeah, it's a good spot for him, right? Uh, the Jerome up there. They're going to keep him up there for the Withers. Um, he's a Pennsylvania bred, the son of Hard Spun. Um, you know, wasn't the fastest of of, of races, but uh, you got to give the Colt uh, credit where it's due, uh, winning by, uh, you know, multiple lengths over El Grande O, who I believe also will uh, uh, return in the Withers as well. But, you know, right now they're not running real fast in the Northeast. Uh, most of the top prospects venture south for the winter. So you just take that into consideration. Doesn't mean a horse can't come from there and, 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 and perform well. But um, right now these are – minor players on the road to the Kentucky Derby. Yeah. And in and, my opinion, and, and you know that we've had a couple of other horses that, you know, have won some maiden races and, you know, allowances that have stamped themselves, you know, probably next out road to the der Derby contenders up at Turfway park and the Turfway preview uh, vote. No, for the Billy Mori camp is aiming towards the Jeff Ruby stakes. He won the, the Turfway preview is going to step up uh, in class next time out and stretch out in distance. So I think he's a horse to keep an eye on for that Jeff Ruby stakes picture up at Turfway Park. Do you see any others that caught your eye? Yeah, let's just go in alphabetical order for me. Uh, let's do it. This one, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, no. <coughs> oh, boy. Three. Yeah, you know, you thought the holiday would, it's just you this need dry more, hack. You need more Woodford Reserve. Coughs just don't go away. Yeah. Um, it's what, this was last week. Wasn't, the, you know, the fastest of races, but Ari's Magic down at Tampa Bay for, for Christoph Clement, one by four and a half lengths uh, in debut at odds of four to five. It's a son of good magic. They gave uh, 775000 for this Colt at the uh, OBS March sale. So, I'm, you know, pioneer of the mile, uh, uh, mayor uh, underneath. So I, I I think this horse, I'm, I'm, I think he's a long shot player, uh, maybe down there in, in South Florida, a horse that ran uh, really fast for Todd Pletcher was born noble. Uh, one on December 30th in his debut going seven eighths at Gulfstream park. This also is a $725,000 purchase. It was as a yearling at Keeneland and it's a son of constitution. 
one by five and a quarter lengths, ran uh, seven eighths and one twenty four and one. This horse looked like uh, one of those serious uh, wintertime Todd Pletcher type horses. Absolutely. Uh, Carbone, I thought was great uh, mm-hmm. in his uh, stretch out to a mile. He's uh, the Matoli Colt for uh, Steve Asmussen and the Heilig Bros. Still remains to be seen how far this horse really wants to go. Is he a Derby horse? Is he a Pat Day Mile horse? But uh, either way, he's run credibly in his two starts. Uh, change of command was a nice uh, winner of a mile and the 16th um, uh, first level allowance on January the 5th at Goldstream Park. A narrowly beat uh, uh, Cardinal for uh, for Todd Pletcher. That's a Stone Street Colt. Um, so it, I thought that was a live race. Fighting off the cough as you hear it go on. Yeah. What do you what do we know about Michelle Lovell's I mean, speedster? Here we have a, a, a Motown cult debuting at fairgrounds, going six furlongs, and the speed figure came back monstrous, I, winning by five I, I, in one oh nine and four. And look what odds this horse was. How did this horse sneak off? Twenty one to one. Twenty one to one on a Michelle Lovell steamer. Man, oh man. Uh I think this horse is Pat Day mile bound. I think Michelle thinks between seven eighths and a mile is this horse's distance. And uh, she's going to sort of target his campaign that way. But man, was he impressive. Brad Cox had another one, uh, Ethan energy uh, for stone street stables. Uh, the uncle Mulcolt uh, broke its maiden in its second start at fairgrounds uh, winning on December the 23rd, going two turns and winning by five and a quarter lengths. I expect him to either, uh, return neither the Lecompte or the Southwest. Uh, Brad's got a number of horses under consideration for both races. He'll play it by ear as uh, the races get closer. Imperial Gun for Asmussen, another gun runner. Surprise, surprise. Uh, breaks its maiden in its second start at Oaklawn Park on New Year's Eve. One going to Mama 16th and 145 and four. Uh, again, five and three quarter lengths. It's the son of gun runner out of an empire maker mare. Um, Legalize. I, I don't know what to make of this horse. Cherie DeVoe, uh, I, I think this is a very nice horse. Uh, broke its maiden at Churchill Downs on closing day, going seven furlongs. Backs the horse up in, in distance, going six furlongs. Um, you know, it was kind of a speed favoring track that day on December 23rd, winning the, 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 the Sugar Bowl. Um, it was a two and three quarter length victory. They gave a half a million for the horse. It's a, it's a son of constitution out of an unbridled song mare. So I don't think distance should be an issue, but she did, you know, go seven eights and backed up to six. This could be an interesting player. Maybe it's a Pat day mile horse, but I think this horse is worth looking at. Down yeah, I, the got, road. I got a feeling that they're going to give this horse a shot, whether it be in the allowance race. Um, I think there's one on the comp day or a uh, or risen star day, and then maybe give, you know, one shot to try the, the, the derby out. This is one I, I think is going to get a shot at least attempting two turns. Muth, after running second to uh, Fierceness in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile, returned going seven eights. You know, Santa Anita eliminated the sham uh, from their road to the Kentucky Derby series. Get ready for that button, KK. Yep. <coughs> there we go. Try to go off to the side as much as I can. Yeah. Muth, um, I thought, was uh, great in the seven furlong San Vicente and uh, really looked uh, powerful. A son of good magic uh, out of the Uncle Mo. A uh, mayor, a uh, hop up, um, and, and kind of vol- validated the horse being a finalist for the Eclipse Award. Although fierceness will be an easy winner. Mm-hmm. Otella won the uh, uh, the Mucho Macho Man narrowly by a half length over First World War. That's for Christoph Clement. Eh, it wasn't that fast, but uh, that horse will be making some noise uh, down in the uh, Florida series. I thought uh, another horse at Gulfstream Resilience for. Uh, Bill Mott, uh, one on New Year's Day, that same program, uh, kind of a speed favoring track that day. The horse, you know, rated just off uh, early on and one by four and a quarter lengths. It was his fourth try to break the maiden, but it was the second time around two turns. A son of into mischief out of smart strike might be uh, figuring things out. And then uh, let's see, last but not least, um, very fast down at Oaklawn Park on New Year's Eve. Uh, Ron Moquette debuted Time for Truth. It's a son of Omaha Beach out of a, a looking at Lucky Mare. You know, interesting, they they only paid $47,000 for the cult. So that would suggest, look, there's probably uh, some confirmation 
quirks here and there, but what a nice fast victory. Six furlongs in one ten and two uh, under Rafael Barrano. And uh, if you bet on debut, you got four to one odds. I don't think we'll see that again. But those were some of the Colts uh, that I saw uh, over the break that merited discussion. Yeah, that's a a good way to put it. Uh, Discussion points there. We'll see a lot of the horses that we, you know, have come to, you know, keep on our radar as two-year-olds in the fall start making their bids for returning as three-year-olds. There's several, you know, uh, key races coming up on the road to the Derby. We'll talk to LeCompte next week here on Inside the Kentucky Derby, where several probables on that list. Uh, again, as you mentioned, Darren, you know, Brad Cox has a number of horses that could go either to the LeCompte or the next week into the Southwest. Awesome Road is one of those with a question mark. Uh, Can Group is uh, targeting the LeCompte. Ethan Energy is either the LeCompte or the Southwest. Lat Long, uh, Light Line is either LeCompte or Southwest. Nash and Track Phantom. Uh, for the LeCompte and then the Southwest, you have those Brad Cox question marks. You'll also have just steel uh, for Wayne Lucas is probably targeting the Southwest as well. And uh, who were, Oh, liberal arts is targeting the Southwest. So that's one of those names that we um, for Robbie Medina that we, we saw here at Churchill Downs that is, uh, you know, targeting return. Uh, you have fierceness probably for the Holy bull uh, honor Marie for the risen star and then door knock fountain of youth. So there's some of the bigger names that are uh, targeting their returns for their first starts as three-year-olds. Well, don't forget that starting with the Lacoste, the points double in value, T- uh, 20 points for a uh, victory, 10 for second, six for third, four for fourth, two for fifth. Currently atop the leaderboard uh, as we speak is um, um, fierceness who will win the uh, eclipse award as champion two-year-old Colt for Mike Rapoli. Uh, 30 points. Then you have Locked at 19, Timberlake at 16, Liberal Arts, who you were just speaking of, has 13, Drumroll Please at 13, West Saratoga at 11, Anna Marie 10, Otto the Conqueror at 10, Doorknock at 10, Catching Freedom at 10, and Track Phantom at 10. That rounds out a top 11 of horses that have won races on the road to the Kentucky Derby. This weekend, a little light on the action, but there are some uh, interesting races to keep an eye on. Saturday at Aqueduct, the opener uh, is a six furlong maiden special weight. Um, and then you have at Gulfstream Park, uh, looks like they have a split uh, maiden race down there. No, it's not a split because they're two different distances. Race six at Gulfstream goes off at uh, 239 Eastern. Um, Three year olds are going to sprint six furlongs on the main track. In the ninth race at Gulfstream, they'll be going a mile in there. So just keep an eye on those type of races. And then at Oaklawn Park, you have the one-mile maiden special rate uh, race as a uh, race five. That'll be at 325 Eastern. You mentioned liberal arts. I think of another horse that kind of fits that same type of profile. West Saratoga for Larry Demerit um, is going to be making his return. He, of course, won the Iroquois that kicked off the road to the Kentucky Derby. He is the 9-5 to five favorite drew the rail in a uh, compact field of seven down at Tampa Bay Downs. There's no points on the line. It's the Pasco, but that's uh, where he's wintering, going seven-eighths of a mile. Kind of a tricky spot, stuck down on the inside sprinting, but uh, probably used as a stepping stone for the Tampa Bay series, which includes the Sam Davis and, of course, the Tampa Bay Derby. Yeah, it was interesting. He uh, he had a published work over at Turfway, and uh, I had a feeling that they're trying to see if he could handle the, the Tapita surface up there to run in that series. And not sure, you know, I wasn't there to see how visually it went. And um, he'll stick on the dirt as of right now as uh, the favorite in the Pasco. There is action in the road to the Kentucky Oaks. The Busanda uh, goes on Saturday at uh, 247. Race six at Aqueduct. Shimmering Allure is the heavy four to five favorite for Kenny McPeak. Manny Franco will be aboard. It's a compact field of five that'll get points on the road to the Kentucky Oaks. Good times here at Churchill Downs. It's all happening. We've got the construction of the new paddock outside of our doorstep here in the parlay. It's really coming along nicely. It's it's just crazy to see how transformative it is uh, to this entire facility. You can see all the, the cool renderings and uh, video renderings of that on Kentucky Derby on derby150.com. Derby150.com for all the renderings of the new paddock. Or if you're swinging by our office, can look out our window and we can see it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, and construction is also going along. Remember the jockey club suites has a $14 million uh, kind of 
redo and modernize it a little bit. Um, that's coming along nicely. The triple crown room up there is going to have a nice, large led video board. And then, um, out in the pagoda, you know, the two video boards that have probably been around 25 to 30 years that are, uh, you know, on the wings of the pagoda, we're getting two new ones that'll arrive around May 20th or March 20th, uh, which is just before training returning. So, uh, that'll be good, uh, to have a new video out there. So, yeah, a lot happening right now at, at Churchill Downs. Yeah, we still have horses uh, close by at Churchill Downs Trackside. There's a lot of horses that are going up and back to uh, Turfway Park over at Trackside. The backside is currently empty right now. Lots of renovations going on back there. So lots of painters and people fixing up the barn area, and that's what happens over the several months uh, after this December the 31st of, uh, you know, when horses officially leave the grounds, they, you know, do all sorts of work to the backside and that's happening right now feverishly back there as we're waiting for the first horses to come back in the, between the second and third week of March, which will be uh, always a, a fun, true sign of spring right now. It's colder than ever. Yeah. Stall applications are going to be due on March the 1st. The demand for stalls has never been so high. Uh, you, you mentioned that the stable area will reopen on March the 19th, but the first day of training won't be until uh, Friday, March the 22nd. Um, you know, if you're listening to this podcast and trying to make arrangements to come to Kentucky Derby 150, if you haven't already gotten tickets, log on now to KentuckyDerby.com. Click on tickets. Tickets, I mean, the demand this year is amazing. There's less than two, uh, 1,200 um, seats left uh, for the Derby, and most of those are in the new two uh, paddock club spaces which are, you know, the Woodford Reserve Club and uh, Club SI, which uh, is a great new partnership with Sports Illustrated where that club will be decorated with some of the tremendous archival photos in in Sports Illustrated's library. Um, And then they'll also have some, you know, ambassadors on hand for for Oaks and Derby. Uh, General admission pricing uh, right now for the Derby, it's $105 because uh, the uh, demand is massive and it's only going to continue to go up. I mean, as the demand increases, the pricing will go up as well. So um, get your tickets now. And if you're looking to book a hotel room, I I highly suggest you start looking. And if you're going to travel to Churchill Downs, I mean, look, most of the hotels in, in Louisville are three night minimum you know, stays. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and because of the Derby's massive popularity around the world, the hotel rooms and hotels capitalize it on the pricing as well. So if you're, my travel tip would be, if you're coming, it's, there's not much traffic here in the Ville. So if you can find a hotel on the outskirts, 30 to 40 minute drive away, 30 to 40 miles, typically, uh, outside the pricing will be a little bit lower, but uh, I'm telling you the, the 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 anticipation of this year's Derby is unprecedented. I've never seen it this uh, hyped up and uh, with minimal inventory at the start of the year. Yeah, it's pretty wild. It's uh, very exciting to see, and of course, if you're coming to Derby. 150. Be sure you uh, stock up on your Woodford Reserve because there's 200 flavor notes in every sip, and it's one heck of a drink and one way to celebrate the Kentucky Derby is sipping on a Woodford Reserve, especially if you're handicapping these Road to the Derby races. It always aids in your handicapping if you have a little bit of a Woodford to go with it. I look, I love the flavor notes. Yeah, you know that all so, of them. Uh, it 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 can improve your handicapping at times. Can it improve the cough? I need to mix it with the honey. I'm not, I have not been doing that. I need, I need Woodford lemon and honey and, and zap it with some boiling, you know, water a little bit as well. You need to bring a jar of honey to your watering hole to make sure they have honey. They have the Woodford. I'm sure they've certain, got lemons. I'm certain they got lemons. They have hot water. Just bring your own honey. Yeah. I apologize for the, I really thought the three week break would, 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 
you know, break it up. It, a cough is not good when you're trying to do a podcast. So, uh, it th- we apologize for the cough. If you'd like to, uh, this podcast, uh, please give us five stars, even though I, my voice is a two star performance. Um, but go ahead and please, uh, subscribe, hit like, tell your friends we're on every platform. And, um, we appreciate it. Spread the you know the word of the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have lots of cool episodes of Inside the Kentucky Derby on the lead up to Kentucky Derby 150. We'll be back next Thursday to preview the Lecompte Stakes down at Fairgrounds, which is a very key race on the Fairgrounds series of the road to the Kentucky Derby 150. Until then, we'll talk soon.